In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We welcome you this afternoon as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is also called Good Shepherd Sunday. It's kind of the high point as we move ever closer to Pentecost Sunday, but it's kind of the midway point of our Easter season, and we should thank of God's abundant blessings and that protection as he governs and watches over his people. As you hear all the readings today, it's all about that resurrected Christ who is that Savior of the world for all of us. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share of the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. The 
first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yes, we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What he shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall like, be like him. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. 
And I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Palm Sunday this year, we prepared one of those handouts that everyone could follow along rather than use the missalettes that we're not using this year. But it gave me an opportunity to actually really look at the scriptures from Palm Sunday and Good Friday by preparing that handout. And there was a quote in there of Jesus that really stood out to me. And what he says in that quote is that all of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. It was on, on Palm Sunday. And you know what? It's so true. You take God away from your life and take it away from our world and strike the shepherd, and the sheep get dispersed. Take a look at Buffalo, for example. A couple days ago, on Thursday, there was an article on Channel 4's uh, newscast in which the DA was asked a question about the, the shootings that have occurred in Buffalo. And so far in January, February, and March, there were 72 different shootings just in Buffalo, which is five minutes away from here, okay? Whether they be injured or killed, that is a 200% increase than just two years ago. Talk about much more violence. You know, I grew up where anytime there was a coastal storm, I would see boards going up around businesses and coastal cities to try and block a hurricane strength. We've all seen that when various hurricanes were coming. But you know, in January, they put all of those, those boards up on the storefronts outside the U.S. Capitol just a couple months ago. Last week when we were awaiting the, the verdict on the Derek Chauvin case in Minneapolis, they did the exact same thing. We went from once protecting ourselves against coastal storms to people in our community. It shows on how much when you strike that shepherd, how much violence will escalate. And so today as we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, it's a day of remembering we need a shepherd. And so what Jesus says when he had given those words that when you strike the shepherd, the sheep will get dispersed, he follows it up with this line on Palm Sunday. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee, meaning that I will really be your shepherd. We need a shepherd. And the Lord says that the sheep will hear my voice. And the sheep is the faithful. It's all of us. So you would have to ask yourself, why a sheep? Why would God use a sheep to use as an analogy? There's so many different animals that could have been used. But why choose sheep? And there are certain aspects about sheep that really tailor into to human nature. First of all, number one, sheep like to wander. If you think about all of us, we like to wander too, don't we? Sometimes we wander on our own, we don't listen to the shepherd, and we get lost. And so one of the reasons why Jesus says that we're the sheep and the sheep hear that voice is because he knows that we can get lost. And when we start to go in our, on our own way and think we got it all figured out and get away from the church and get away from the shepherd, things can really go south in our life where we start boarding up our buildings to protect ourselves or gun violence increases. Nextly, you know, another example is that sheep are actually considered in the animal kingdom as really not very bright, which I hate to hear him say that with us, right? Because sheep really are not the smartest of animals. 
When you think about it, I trained my own dog. Many of you have trained your dog. You've trained animals that you're with. They train horses to do certain things. They do all this different training. But when it comes to sheep, they are not that bright. And so they can't be trained that way. That's why they're led. They're led with that, that shepherd's staff. But I think when it comes to us as human beings, sometimes we don't see the forest through the trees. And we can sometimes not be that bright either. You know, we may have been able to go to the moon this week, you know, on, on that on that space shuttle that went up earlier this week. We can do a lot with technology. We can do a lot of those things. But you know, we also can think that we're so smart that we don't need the shepherd or that we're the shepherd. And in that regard, we become not that bright and our world can fall apart because we can think that we can be so smart that we can outsmart the shepherd himself. And once we get into rough waters, we realize that we can't. Another thing about sheep is that they're weak. You know, they really have no way of protecting themselves. And that's why the shepherd watches over them. They're actually sheep dogs that keep the herd together as well. But when the sheep wanders off by himself or herself, you know, that sheep, they are ripe to have anyone else just gobble them up. So they're, they're just prey for other animals. You know, cats will scratch your eyes out. Dogs will bark and bite you. Horses will use their hoofs to try and get back at you. A sheep doesn't do any of those things. It just stands there mercilessly, you know? And so it teaches us that when we let the doors of evil go into our life and we get away from the shepherd, we become ripe for temptations and mistakes. We just become that way. So in many ways, we are a lot like sheep. We're not as strong as we think we are, even though we may have the greatest armies in the world. When it comes to temptations that we all battle, we all face, we can stand pretty defenseless around them with, 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 not having the, with not actually having the shepherd guarding over us. The sheep, though, if we think about it, when it comes to Jesus' time, they're valued. They're considered valuable, valuable animals. So when you have a shepherd, their worth is by how many sheep they have because they have value in this world. They can give us meat. They can give us the, the wool that comes off of their bodies. We can get milk or sheep milk from them. They're kind of a sense of stature when it comes to Christ's time. But if we think of ourselves, we're really very valuable too. We could work on our marriages and change a neighborhood. We can work with our grandchildren or our friends and take the high road. And you know what? We can make a better world. We can get nourished by this altar here and bring it out to a darkened world. We can put down our guns, you know, and work on world peace. We can do all these things that, you know, we're a valuable commodity to allow God to work in the world. Sheep walk together when we think of sheep. They, they go together in a herd. That's why we have our sheep dogs and, you know, we also have our shepherd there. And honestly, we walk together too. We walk together a lot better when we're together. That's the benefit of church, to come together and gather around the altar and know that we're not God and that we make mistakes and we wander and we sometimes fall into different things that we try and stay out of. But we have a shepherd that watches over us. And I think the most important reason why we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday is that sheep hear the voice. That's what we're called to do to listen to the voice of God in our life when it comes to our relationships, when it comes to when we get that tugging in our heart, when we don't want to do something and go kicking and screaming but do it anyway, when we offer that love that's hearing the sheep's voice. When it comes to dogs, for example, I had a couple of dogs in my life, you know, I could call that dog's name and that dog would run to me. And that's a well-trained dog, but that dog, what dog went to school, you know, in order to do that, didn't do it initially, okay? But that's what would happen. And we can say the same for a lot of animals, but when it comes to sheep, they have a really, really good sense of hearing. And when they hear the shepherd's voice, they follow. It's one thing that really makes sheep unique. If we are not careful, we hear other voices. We hear voices that steer us away, we hear voices that tell us to do something else. We hear voices that say you don't need to go to church. We hear voices that you don't need to pray. 
We hear voices that you can pick up your guns. We can hear a lot of different voices in our life. And so as we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, where Jesus will tell us, I am the Good Shepherd, the sheep hear my voice. Today is a day for all of us to tune in to a faithful Lord who tells us, I have the power over the darkness and the light. I can pick it up and I can lay it down. And he says repeatedly in our gospel today that I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for you because you are my sheep and I love you and I want the best for you. All I want you to do is listen to me. Don't do it alone. Stay together as a flock and listen to the voice. You know, all of us are shepherds among this flock. We shepherd our families, we shepherd our relationships, we shepherd our kids, we shepherd our colleagues at work and school, all of these different things. All of us have an opportunity to be a shepherd, but we become Christ's shepherd in this world, in a darkened world where he needs us to be shepherds, to bring people closer and closer to a loving Lord. But we also need to remember that first and foremost, we're the sheep. We need to listen to the voice, we need to know that we don't have it all figured out. We need to know that sometimes we wander. But at the same time, the shepherd brings them back. The shepherd brings all of us back. And we become nourished around this altar in order to really effectuate a change in the world, a world in such a need to listen to that voice. So today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and tomorrow at the 1030, our First Holy Communion class will receive their First Holy Communion and you'll see all their names, there's six of them, three of them on each side that are they're named on that altar there. And you know what? They've got their name on that altar like they got a reservation at that table. And that's the way it is for all of us. We've been called, we've been invited, and we've been called by name. And God calls us around this altar to hear his voice, heed his message, and follow him. Follow him when it's easy, but more importantly, follow him when it's hard. And the reason why he says, I lay down my life over and over again, it is because that's what a good shepherd does. A good shepherd doesn't ask anything that he hasn't done before. And what he wants us to do is just be one. Be one body of Christ that he calls us together as, as his and be his flock Turn away from those false voices and the voice of reason that builds up our family, turns away from temptations, and builds up our community and our world. May we hear his voice this Good Shepherd Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to rise as we now renew our baptismal promises using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now offer our petitions to our Father, the Good Shepherd in heaven. For Pope, for the bishops, for the leaders of our church, for all the faithful that are baptized and gathered around this altar here at all the altars of the world, may the Lord guide us in our efforts to shepherd his people and build the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local and national leaders, for ways in which we're leaders in our own families and businesses and schools, may God help us to see those who we serve with the eyes and the mercy of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those worried about the health of loved ones, we pray in a special way for our parasyclists, all those in need of prayers, all the ways in which we're broken or 
tempted in our own way and the Good Shepherd draws us back to him to hear his voice, may the Lord protect us from all of our needless anxiety, bring us health of mind and body, and also help us in strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community of St. John the 23rd, may the Holy Spirit help us to guide us to hear the shepherd's voice in our lives and in the lives of those that we lead, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, I uh, had a, a, I will say, a burial today at Hillcrest Cemetery for a woman named Audrey Toomey. I pray for her and her family. We also pray for Karen Heltz, who died last week, but um, um, funeral arrangements are being made right now. We also pray for our Mass Intentions of the Day, which is Henry and Dorothea Weber, and also Norman Rosinski, Donna Margarucci, and Nick Margarucci. So for Henry and Dorothea, Norman, Donna, and Nick, and all the faithful departed that are marked with the sign of faith, may they experience fullness of joy with God and the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. We make these prayers to the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for our First Holy Communion kids that will receive the sacrament tomorrow. And may it be a sign of renewal for them and their families, but also a sign of renewal for all of us that just over this weekend we remember, maybe remember our own First Holy Communion. And may God's grace be upon all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find a light in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You'll see across the street at the Winchester Fire Hall, there's a chicken barbecue this afternoon. They asked me to, to let you know about that. Also wanted to let you know about our chicken barbecue as well that's on May 21st. We have a ticket booth in our vestibule. If you could sign up for it, I'd be grateful for it. Our sales are strong on it, but it always helps to know how our numbers are. So the earlier you sign up, it just helps us and sort of know where we're at. But honestly, it's a great dinner for $12. It just, it's a phenomenal dinner. So I hope you do sign up for it and your family and just join them. That's um, May 21st, in which the Good Shepherd gives you um, the day off from cooking, to be honest with you, you know, in order to get that. Um, our May calendar raffle also begins this coming week on the 1st. So um, if you can participate in that, I'd be grateful for that as well. And you'll see a flyer in the bulletin that we're going to do a Mother's Day basket sale or, or a, a summer basket sale on Mother's Day weekend, which is May 8th and 9th. And um, those are always just beautiful baskets that is a way of taking church home with you. So um, our chicken barbecues that, that, that's at the front doors, the other things will be on the day off. So, um, so just keep getting involved in the things here. And as we move there through this pandemic, we'll be all and more you know, together each and every week. I was asked by um, one of our parishioners that as numbers increase in all of our masses, all three of the masses, if you sit often on the side aisles, that you might want to consider sitting in the center, and it just allows people to see an empty pew if they're looking around for one. So certain masses, it happens more than others, but it's just something to keep in mind. The more ways we welcome people here to worship, um, the stronger we will all be, and it's a way of taking those scattered sheep and just bringing them back to the flock or the fold as God desires. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ by baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus.